The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Network Suspense Stories. Are you ready for a thriller, chiller, or the macabre? We now go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our featured suspense presentation. Suspense. This is the man in black, here again to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. From Hollywood, we bring you a star, Mr. Orson Welles, who this evening begins a four-week engagement as guest of these proceedings. In the interest of prime suspense, Mr. Welles and the producer of this series have scheduled four radio stories, which they feel are particularly distinguished in our chosen field. The first of these is... The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell. And so with the performance of Orson Welles in the character of General Zaroff and Keenan Wynn as Sanger Rainsford, who learned from Zaroff what was the most dangerous game, we again hope to keep you in suspense. Yes. I haven't much time. Any moment now he may come in, and when he does, I'm going to kill him. It's him or me. And I'm going to do my best to make it him. Well, maybe it sounds crazy to you. I guess it does. It would have sounded crazy to me a few days ago when I was with Whitney on the yacht. I was on a pleasure trip. Ha! A pleasure trip! How were I, how could I or anyone realize then the horror and torment I was to go through? How was I to know of Ivan? And the death swamp? And the hounds? How was I to know of Zaroff? Think of it! It was only four nights ago that the ship went down. We've been talking about this island, Ship Trap Island, Whitney said it was called on the charts. We were sleepy and started on down below to turn in. I was mixing myself a nightcap when I looked up and saw it. A tremendous reef racing at us out of the fog. I screamed out a warning, but it was too late. We were right upon it. desperately away, but I might not have lived to go through the horror which was soon to come. I struck out to the right in the direction of the island about which Whitney had been telling me. I have no recollection of how long I swam, but all at once I heard the mustering and growling of the sea breaking on the rocky shore. With my remaining strength, I dragged myself from the swirling waters, all in, gasping, my hands raw, I at last reached a flat place at the top. I flung myself down on the jungle edge and tumbled headlong into the deepest sleep of my life. When I awoke up from a strange place, having no idea how I had left Well, Ivan, our friend seems to be awakening. Where, where is this? Where am I? Do not be alarmed, my friend. My man Ivan found you out on the cliff and brought you here to be taken care of. Well, thank God there's life on this island. I hardly believe. Few people do. You are quite safe here in my castle, sir. 
And you rinse, are going to believe you yeah, Take it easy. Sing a rinse for the New York. The way things are, I can't Sing a rinse. I'm yes. offering you a well. piece of money, Mr. Troy, to find it out. It is indeed a very great pleasure and okay. honor to welcome you, Mr. Sanger Rainsford. Lee, You're the celebrated hunter, are you not? Yes, yes, you know me. Uh, by reputation only. I've read your book about hunting snow leopards in Tibet, you see. My name is General Zaroff. I am not English, Mr. Rainsford, but I went to a good school. Perhaps you recognize the colors of my tie. Uh, no, it makes no difference. I have lived too long in the jungle to be a snob. <laughs> well, I... Uh, uh, no, I can't tell you how happy I am to meet you, General. And I can't tell you how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Rainsford. But come, we shouldn't be chatting here. We can talk later. You must be hungry. Yes, I am rather. What? Van thought you'd like a robe. He's drying your clothes for you. Oh, thank you. He was an incredibly strong fellow, but you mustn't mind his looks. His ears were cut off in battle, and he has the misfortune to be deaf and dumb. He is sensitive about his appearance. A simple fellow, really, but I'm afraid... A bit savage. Oh, please be in our family for years. Father, we upon, if you please, Mr. Rainsford. I was about to have my luncheon just before you awoke. You can have it together now. Does the rope fit you all right? Oh, yes, yes, perfectly, thanks. I am so glad. You uh, have quite a collection of heads here. Lions, tigers, mm. elephants, moose, bears. Oh, I don't believe I've ever seen a more perfect specimen. They are nice. I take great pride in them. You have good cause coming from you, Mr. Rainsford. That is a great compliment. We are. You sit over there. Thank you. Oh, I do. Uh, we do our best to preserve the amenities of civilization here. Please forgive my any lapses. Of course. Yes. I'm well off the beaten track, you know. But there are times when you don't understand these innocent, do you? Shoo-shoo. Well, I don't know. Oh, come on. Shoo-shoo. Shoo-shoo. <laughs> <laughs> this is my little pet, Mr. Rainsford. As a hunting falcon, Shushu is of no further usefulness in the field. But I am fond of its company. Am I not, sweetheart? Patience, my darling. I know you're hungry, my dear. You're hungry. Uh, your head is a really remarkable general. That, uh, that king buffalo is the largest I've ever seen. Uh, is that very easy? monster. Did it charge you? Hurled me against a tree, fractured my skull, left me a scar. But I got the boot. I've always thought the Cape Buffalo was the most dangerous of all. Oh, no, no, you're wrong. The Cape Buffalo is not the most dangerous game. Yvonne, the wine. Can I help you? Uh, how does he understand like you? He reads my lips. Mm-hmm. My name's you like a champagne, Mr. Mr. Rainsford? Ivan chills it expertly. Oh. Uh, no, no, the, the case of buffalo is not the most dangerous. Well, frankly, I can't visualize you. Here in my preserve on this island, I hunt more but dangerous may I see Mr. Troy, it's oh, Is there a big game on this island? We were his publishers. The biggest. Oh. Really? Oh, it isn't here naturally, of course. I have to stock the island. Uh, what have you imported, General? Uh, jaguars? Jaguars. I hope you like filet mignon, Mr. Ray. I do very much, thank you. Uh, is it jaguars, General? No, no, no. no. Hunting jaguars ceased to interest me some years ago. I exhausted their possibilities. No thrill left in jaguars. You understand? No real danger. I live for danger, Mr. Rainsford. We will have some capital hunting. You and I. I should be most glad to have your company. Yes, but I'll tell you, you'll be amused, I know. I think you may say in all modesty that I've done a rare thing. Yes, I've invented a new sensation. May I pour you another glass of champagne, Mr. Rainsford? Thank you. God makes some men poets, some he makes kings, some beggars, me he made a hunter. My hand was made for the trigger. My father once said this. Made for the trigger. My whole life has been one prolonged hunt. I have hunted every kind of game in every land. It would be possible for me to tell you how many animals I've killed. Grizzlies in your Rockies, crocodiles in the Ganges, rhinoceroses in East Africa, Africa, by the way, that... Cape Buffalo hit me and laid me up for six months. As soon as I recovered, I started the Amazon to hunt jaguars. I heard they were unusually cunning. 
They weren't. Do you take a delight? They were no match at all for a hunter with his wits about him. That sounds like a high-powered rifle. Well, I'll unveil. I was bitterly disappointed. Forget about Steve Venick. Lying in my tent with a splitting headache one night. A terrible thought pushed his way. Hunting was beginning to bore me. And if I don't? And hunting, remember, had been my life. Now, about that I've heard that in America, Please, businessmen often go to pieces when they give up You're going to be sorry. business in their life. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I had no wish to but go to then, pieces. <laughs> attractive men like you. I, I, I must do something. Uh, now, mine is an analytical mind, Mr. Rainsford. In between threats. Doubtless, that is why I enjoy the problems of the chase. Oh, no doubt. So I asked myself why the hunt no longer fascinated me. You are much younger than I am, Mr. Rainsford, and have not hunted as much, but you perhaps can guess the answer. And what is it? Simply this. Hunting has ceased to be what you call a sporting proposition. It has become too easy. I always got my quarry. Always. It's no greater bore than perfection. Cigarettes? Uh, no, thank you. No animal had a chance in here. Not a chance. That is no boast. It is a mathematical certainty. The animal had nothing but his legs and his instinct. Instinct is no match for reason. When I thought of this, it was a tragic moment. It came to me as an inspiration. What I must do. And that was... I had to invent... A new animal to hunt. New animal? Are you joking? Not at all. Looking for another suspect. I never joke about hunting. I needed a new animal. I found one. So I bought this island, built this castle here. I do my hunting. Island's perfect for my purposes. There are jungles, the maze of trails, hills, swamps. Yes, but the animal, the animal jungles are. It surprised me with the most exciting hunting. No other hunting compares with it. Wasn't Melissa's either. Every day I hunt. Exactly how many? I never grow bored now. For I have a quarry with which I can match my wits. Yes, but you still have. I wanted the ideal animal to hunt. I said. What are the attributes of an ideal quarry? And the answer was, of course, it must have courage, cunning, and above all, it must be able to reason. Well, no one will reason. There is one that can. One? But you can't mean... Why not? I can't believe you're serious, General Zahn. You're just joking. Joking? Quite serious. Speaking about hunting. Hunting? You're speaking about murder. Oh, dear me. That's not just I think I can show you that your scruples are quite ill-founded. Yes? I hunt the scum of the earth. Sailors from tram ships, Laskars. Japs, mongrels, a thoroughbred horse, a hound is worth more than a score. But these are men. Precisely, that is why I use them. Maybe that intruder knew we were there, maybe he didn't. Either way, it didn't make much difference. They can reason. They can reason. They can reason. They can They can reason. 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 Including you, uh, you visit my training secretary. school. It's in You're the cellar. That whole place with a I cellar. have about a dozen so pupils down there the now. They're from the Spanish park San Car that had the bad luck to run A very inferior lot, I regret to say. Poor specimens, more accustomed to the deck than to the jungle. But no. They had a game. Sort of game. I suggest to one of them that. We go hunting. Give, I give him a supply of food and uh, an excellent hunting knife. I give him three hours start. I'm to follow, armed only with a pistol of the smallest caliber and range. If my quarry eludes me for three whole days, he wins the game. I just knew you'd get into some sort of trouble, Mr. Troy. Knew it or organized it, Miss Morgan? There was a police seal on that door. Look, I can explain. Suppose he refuses to be hunted. However, I would like to give him his choice. Of course. He got under the scene he need not play that game if he does not wish to. If he does not wish to hunt, I turn him over to Ivan. Ivan once had the honor of serving as official penultimate by King. 
their own ideas. You expect suppose. me to believe a cock and bull story Invariably, like that? Yes. Mr. Rainsford. It has to be the truth. This Invariably, they choose the truth. I couldn't tell. The room and was if they win... Anyway, they didn't actually come into the room. To date. They shoved up the window and threw a picture on the carpet. Well, I don't think there was I any do picture. I do not wish I think this is all a pigment of their very first time. Mr. Mr. Rainsford. Now, don't you start. Many of them afford only the most elementary sort of problem, I assure you. Occasionally, I strike a tartar. <laughs> she still remembers the tartar, don't you, Doc? Yes. Yes, he almost did win. This is a copy of the new newspaper. See? Steve Rennick's last Wait, words. I'll uh, open the window. Hello, boys! Uh, uh, a rather good lot, I think. They let out at seven every night. Anyone should try to get into my castle or something extremely regretful. You employ staff writers? Well, there are a couple of people. Which I've enough of this. Come on, I'll show you a collection of heads. I'm yes, quite sure you've never seen. A girl? Never Boy, I don't just a minute, Inspector. There's a reason for this. Join me in the library for coffee. One of them is a girl, uh, Miss Morgan. I hope that you will excuse yeah. me tonight, Name? you know. Oh. I'm really not feeling well at all. Indeed. Helen Fremont. I know what it is. My Mr. old complaints. <laughs> Aren't you bored of me? You need some excitement. Talk to the lady. May I tonight we'll hunt. Okay, but I've got a hunch. Hey, I Mr. Rainsford. Oh, come now, Inspector. You, you know about people in the country. Come on, General. There have been a couple of times. I won't hunt. I won't murder. There's you. That'll be enough from you. Now, where do we find Helen Fremont? The choice rests entirely with you. But may I not venture to suggest that you will find my idea of sport more diverting than a bond? My dear fellow, you don't mean that you plan to hunt me. I'm sorry, Mr. Troy, we don't have until six. I'm not just for me, Mr. Fremont. I just wanted to have a chat with your sister. Have I not told you? here, isn't you? I always mean what I say about you. Peter Troy. Just tell us about Janine Lee and Steve Rennick. You understand. Inspiration. Tell her. I'll be I drink to a foeman worthy of my steel at last. I simply can't believe this must be some sort of dream. You'll find the game worth playing, Mr. Rainsford. Think of it, your yeah, brain yeah, against, yeah, mine, yeah, your against yeah, mine, your woodcraft against mine, your strength, your stamina against mine. Outdoor chess. Uh, and the stake is not without value, eh? And if I win... I'll cheerfully acknowledge myself defeated if I do not find you by midnight of the third day. My sloop will place you on the mainland near a town. Or you can trust me. I give you my word as a gentleman, as a sportsman. Of course, you return, Mr. Rainsford. your visit here. I will agree to nothing of the kind. Oh. Well, it's like a trademark. What do you mean? Oh, well, in Rennick that case... Rennick's apartment reeked of it the night he was killed. Mm, but why discuss that now? Uh, three days hence, hence we can discuss it over a bottle of Vuk de unless, uh... And I don't mean the title of his book, either. Well, Holly? your well, choice, Mr. Rainsford. I'm a hunter, you know my choice. Mm -hmm. like Yvonne here will supply you with hunting clothes, to food, and knife. I suggest you wear moccasins. They leave a poorer trail. I suggest, too, that you avoid the big swamp in the southeast corner of the island. We call it Death Swamp. The quicksand there. Well... I must beg you to excuse me now. Joke, we always take our you siesta after our lunch. Don't we, Shushu? <laughs> Come, my little friend. No You'll right. hardly have time for a nap, I fear. You'll want to start. I shall not follow but he through couldn't this. Maintain the standard. Hunting at night is so much more exciting than by day, enough. don't you think? Then who left the others? Hmm. You did. Well? You were his ghost writer. Oh, Au revoir, Mr. Rainsford. Melissa Morgan spilled the beans down at the back of the yard. I... <laughs> 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 That's just the fact, sir. I fought my way through the bush for two hours, way, repeating to myself the over and over again, I must keep my nerve, I must keep my nerve. My whole idea at first was to put distance between myself and General Sorrow. And at this end, I had plunged along through the thicket spurred on by the sharp rowls of something very much like panic. Now I had got a grip on myself. I'd stopped. I was taking stock of the situation. I saw that straight flight was futile. Inevitably, it would bring me face to face with the sea. Well, I'll give him a trail, I muttered. 
and I struck off from the rude path I had been following and into the trackless wilderness. I made a series of intricate loops. I doubled back on my trail again and again, recalling all the lore of the fox hunt, all the dodges of the fox. Night found me exhausted, my hands and face lashed by the branches on a thickly wooded ridge. My need for rest was imperative, and I thought, I played the fox, now I must play the cat of the fable. A big tree with a thick trunk and outspread branches was nearby. And taking care not to leave the slightest mark, I climbed up and stretched out among the broad limbs. Rest brought me new confidence and almost a feeling of security. Even so expert a hunter as General Zorov could not face me here, I assured myself. An apprehensive night crawled slowly by, my mind keenly alert for any sound, any warning. Towards the dawn, an instinct I never knew existed. Like an animal must possess, and held me to a far off in the distance on a westerly direction. Sure enough, following the trail with the sureness of a bloodhound came General Zorro. Nothing escaped those searching black eyes, no crushed blade of grass, no bent twig, no mark, no matter how fine it was. My heart pounding furiously, I slid down quickly from the tree and struck off again into the woods. I knew I had to do something desperate. I knew that I had little time in which to do it. Three hundred yards from my hiding place, I stopped where a huge dead tree leaned precariously on a smaller living one. Throwing off my sack of food, I took my knife from its sheath and began to work with all my energy. The job was finished at last. And I threw myself down behind a fallen log three hundred feet away. It was flight now, a desperate, hopeless flight that carried me on for hours. I don't know where I got the strength. I kept telling myself over and over again that I must keep my nerve. But I was competing with a monster, a super huntsman. Dust came, then darkness, and still I managed to press on. The ground grew softer under my moccasins, the vegetation grew ranker, denser. Insects bit at me savagely. Suddenly, as I stepped forward, my foot sank into the universe. I tried to wrench it back, but the muck sucked viciously at my foot like a giant leech. With a violent effort, I tore my foot loose. I knew where I was then. Death swamp and its quicksand. The softness of the earth had given me an idea. I stepped back from the quicksand a dozen feet or so and began to dig. When the pit was above my shoulders, I climbed out and from some hard saplings cut stakes and sharpened them to fine points. These stakes I planted in the bottom of the pit with the points sticking upwards. As fast as I could, I wove a rough carpet of weeds and branches and with it covered the mouth of the pit. And wet with sweat and aching with tiredness, I crouched behind the stump of a lightning charm tree. Oh, I knew Zaroff was coming. I could hear the paddling sound of his feet in the salt. Zaroff was coming and coming fast. He was not feeling his way along foot by foot. Crouching there, I couldn't either see him nor see the pit. I lived a year and a minute, frozen, every muscle tensed. Very good, 
good, Rainford. Very good. You've done well. Your Burmese tiger pit has claimed one of my finest pounds. Again, you score. I think, Mr. Rainford, I'll see what you can do against my whole pack. I'm going back to get them now. Thank you for a most amusing evening. <laughs> Daybreak lying near the swamp, I was awakened by a sound that made me know I had new things to learn about fear. It was a distant sound, faint and wavering, but I knew it. It was the baying of a pack of hounds. I could do one of two things. I could stay where I was and wait. That was suicide. I could flee. That was postponing the inevitable. I had put my very last hope into that tiger pit. For a moment, I stood there thinking... All at once, an idea that held a wild chance came to me, and tightening my belt, I headed away from the swamp. The being of the hounds drew nearer. They would be on me any minute now. My mind worked frantically. I thought of a native trick I had learned in Uganda. I caught hold of a springy young sapling, and to it fastened my hunting knife with the blade pointing down the trail. With a bit of wild grapevine, I tied back the sapling. Then I ran for my life. I was raised that terrifying horse as if they heard and felt the fresh scent. I knew then how an animal at bay feels. At last, I had to stop to get my breath. The baying of the hounds stopped just as suddenly. And with it, my heart stopped too. They must have reached the knife. Excitedly, I shinnied up a tree and looked back. My pursuers had stopped all right. But the hope that had been in my brain when I climbed died. For in the shallow valley, I saw that General Zarok was still on his feet. But Ivan was not. The currently had come along to hold the hounds. The knife, driven by the recoil of the springing tree, had splintered through his chest. I'd hardly tumbled to the ground when the pack took up the cry again. Nerve, 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 I panted as I dashed along. A blue gap showed between the trees dead ahead. The hounds were almost on top of me. I forced myself on towards that gap. I reached it. It was the shore of the sea. Across the cove, I could see the gloomy gray stone of the castle. Twenty feet below me, the sea rumbled and hissed. I hesitated. I heard the hounds. Then I leaped far out into the sea. to me, and I'm here safe in the general's bedroom waiting for him. Three days are up, and I've eluded him, but now I must go further. In a moment, we will meet, he and I, and he will be unarmed. Only one of us is going to live. You understand that now. Uh, quiet, Shushu. Shushu! Be patient, dear. You must forgive me. You're hungry, I know. <laughs> Shush. Rainsford. Jen. Rainsford. How on earth did you get here? I swam. I found it easier and quicker than walking through the jungle. I congratulate you. You've won the game. Oh, no, General. I'm still a beast at bay. Here. <coughs> Get ready, General Zaroff. Swords? Yes. Two of them. I see. Oh, very good. Very good, Rainsford. One of us, then, is to furnish a repast for the hounds. The other will sleep in this... this very excellent bed. Huh. Excellent. On guard, Rainsford. Huh. 
Just as my late host said it would be. A very excellent bed. <laughs> And so closes The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell, starring Orson Welles. Tonight's tale of suspense. Mr. Wells was General Zaroff and Keenan Wynn, Rainsford. This is your narrator, the man in black, who conveys to you Columbia's invitation to spend this half hour in suspense next week, same time, when Orson Welles will again be our star. In Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Lost Special, the producer of suspense is William Spear, who tonight also directed the broadcast, and who with Bernard Herman, the conductor, Lucian Marowick, who composed the original score, and Private Jacques Anson Fink, the radio author, collaborated on tonight's suspense. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.